Hello everyone, welcome to Scorpion Venom Studio Games. This is my project called The Island and in this video I'll be adding more vegetation to the island itself and working a little bit more with the shipwreck that I previously uh, created in the other video. So let's go ahead and get started. I will begin by painting a layer of fern on the island and I'm gonna try to go ahead and blend this in in between certain areas that I think the fern would grow and it's going to be set up in areas close to heavy jungles and we're going to use an alpha brush that will help me paint this in different opacity levels if you uh, use alpha brush it has the fall off on it automatically set up and not only that but it also has a auto rotation uh, enabled as well so that way when I paint it it automatically rotates the brush for me and it creates very interesting patterns now I'm not too concerned about it's not fully being painted and has a smooth transition because I'll be adding other materials of the landscape materials and here I'm adding the puddles and craters. This is the original materials that come with Brushify IO, and I'm using these two to uh, create more of a reeds biome. So it's going to be more of like a swampy area. Uh, this right here is going to be just for demonstration purposes. I don't. Uh, probably going to be changing this in the future, and you will most likely will see this on a bigger island that has ponds and a little creeks and maybe even a river flows but as of right now I'm setting this up on the shoreline over here and making it look like uh, there's gonna be a reed that's spawning close to the shoreline so what I'm trying to do is mix them up in between with these materials uh, what else I'm trying to do here is I have this shipwreck that I've created and I'm trying to organize my world outliner and create a folder just for the shipwreck itself and for the procedural generation of a foliage spawner for our reeds, I'm going to go ahead and drop this box in here. It's going to be a pretty small box, so I'm going to scale it up in 10 by 100 or so. And a little bit on the Z value as well, so that way it renders everything. Now, of course, uh, I, as of right now, I have allow BSP on, and that will need to be turned off. But before I do anything, I always uh, go back and copy the ocean level and going to paste that for all my read foliage types because this was uh, previously worked on other project and in order for me to make sure the spawns on the right on the right height I have to use the current level ocean uh, level for it to work and anytime I'll be testing again I'll be uh, running it in uh, real time so that way you get a chance to look at it better and I definitely like the outcome of the way the reeds spawn. They spawn pretty close to each other. This was uh, uh, one of the procedural foliages that uh, was difficult to set up in the way where they spawn next to each other. But I will be using this also for like bamboo. I believe the bamboo kind of grows in a similar style like reeds do. They're uh, somewhat close to each other. And in order to achieve that, you just got to make sure that the, the radius in the shade is close to each other in order for that to work. And I'm going to go ahead and run through the island and see how the fern turned out. And again, this is actually only four types of fern that I currently have in this level. Uh, there is uh, many more that will be added in the future. And I believe this one has been used from the current August packages that are available for free on Unreal Engine right now. So if you are watching this video in August, you can uh, go on their marketplace and download the packet for free. And you'll be able to use uh, similar vegetation like I use it for this project. And I'm going to go ahead and switch back to creative mode and we're gonna go ahead and add more 
vegetation but before we do that I want to go back to the ship graveyard mesh materials and set up a last boat that I have not placed in the world yet this is the fourth boat from the shipwreck and it's being located right next to the shoreline of the island and of course the reason for that is that because the survivors of the shipwreck have made it to the island so there's going to be again all the items that are placed in the world uh, have some sort of a backstory to it and as a player you'll have to kind of discover these locations and puzzle pieces together and as you can see that I have another boat over here in the water and I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder for it so that way all the boats are gonna be in one folder so that way it will be easier for me to go back to it and I was trying to use this rubble materials but uh, I realized that um, or debris that the, it had actual like wood sticks which probably would be used for the ground but I did come up and found some of the rusty metal and I'm gonna place a few of them in the ground making it look like those were pieces that broke off from the blast and it was a little bit difficult to place them just because they're all flat materials and it's not individual pieces that you can place uh, something like that maybe can be worked on later but I figured I'll add a couple pieces just to uh, give a variety and make the floor look not too simple which only has sand but again since it's a flat piece of a mesh it's difficult to set them up on a angle you know, where I have sand come kind of coming down in certain areas it's difficult to set it up you will have certain sections that are completely covered with the landscape and some might be just floating around and of course you can set them up and then draw a landscape over it but uh, I only use a couple pieces and then using some of these metal debris that I've previously used for this shipwreck but I like to add a couple pieces once in a while here and there again I don't really like to focus just on one section of time I kind of like jumping from place to place again not everybody develops in that way but uh, it gives me freedom to do pretty much whatever and whenever and not to be restricted now of course there's restrictions on your engine itself and your graphics card and your CPU or I mean GPU but other than that there's pretty much anything that I create uh, it comes as I build it there is really nothing that's been pre-planned uh, I usually use Pinterest for reference for the shipwreck and the jungles and the island itself I don't uh, personally sit and draw these things out I uh, usually use the references uh, for the landscapes and how the nature behaves and how it all you know, kind of connects together and uh, here I'm using clover another material that well it's not a real material it's a grass type similar to fern type uh, grass type that I have here and, and this clover is a little bit more dense on the grass amount but also it's much shorter than fern and it doesn't really spawn in on certain areas like um, heavy slopes or uh, steep slopes that I have on the island which is okay uh, in some areas you'll see that it's just being painted and in some sections you'll see the actual fern appearing another one I've added is those uh, root trees or uh, jungle roots and uh, this is what I named them uh, this is probably gonna be temporary because as I start painting them I realized that some of these roots have um, pine cones and again uh, there is no pine cones on these islands so there's something like that probably will be taken out but I try to paint it in a way where you can only see the roots and every time I did paint it it made certain areas look a little bit uh, blurry and there, that transition that I talked about you gotta make sure that you do a good transition and I'm only using this around heavy jungle trees and some of the palm trees and 
uh, steep slopes and again sometimes you can blend those in by using other materials and here I'm using clover again to kind of bring that in and cover some of the imperfection and you just kind of have to play around with it really because there's really no right way of doing it to you know in the, to begin with it, you always have to kind of blend in multiple materials on top of each other to uh, create something unique and different and I found out that by placing certain materials in certain patterns like if you place the rock downs first and then you do some sort of a type of grass like the f clover or a regular grass type you would make it look like the grass is actually growing on top of the rocks and you just have to be careful with your blend mode or the actual strength of your brush in order to make it look right and of course sometimes when it doesn't look right you just have to go back and repaint and here I am trying to add some of the stuff of these uh, particular rock formations that actually were original with Brushify IO uh, one thing with that though is it, those rocks are just painted materials uh, the landscape materials so they're not 3d rocks but in the future i will be adding actual 3d rock 3d rocks like a grass type to it uh, so that way they will be bumping up and of course once everything has been painted for the landscape i will be setting up a, a function that will bump most of these materials and make it look more 3d i've actually done that in the previous videos but um, this is going to be more of like overview in the future to show you how to do it and the lighting hasn't been worked on it yet. Uh, I'll have to get back to that later. And there's all this uh, dark spots you see them on the trees, but uh, this is going to be a completely separate video just dedicated to lighting. Uh, the ocean is not going to be touched anytime soon because I found out that the Unreal Engine is currently working on, I believe it's going to be like a plugin or an addition uh, for 426, and it's going to be involved ocean and everybody's been asking on my channel on how to create ocean hopefully I'll get a chance to actually work with that I kind of looked at the preview video it looked really interesting and I can't wait to play around with it in the future but so far everything turning out pretty good the vegetation starting to blend in really really nice the island doesn't really look too sandy anymore and I'll have to just kind of watch out and make sure that none of this vegetation spawns under water because it can the grass type will spawn underwater if I paint that layer in the water but the foliage boxes set up in a way where no matter how many times you paint there it will not do that so definitely like the looks of it let's go ahead and add another landscape material and I'm gonna be using a paintbrush tool that is using alpha brush I'm going to go ahead and place it in a random spots where I feel like I will have some banana trees randomly spawned and I'm going to let the shaders compile. It's going to take some time to do that. But while it's compiling in certain components and sections of the landscape, I just move on in the other areas where I can still see it and place them in that location. Now, not everywhere it's going to contain the same vegetation, but I try to randomize it and also bring more vegetation to it so that way it looks more natural. What I'm going to do next is find all of my banana trees. I've actually made previous videos about it, how I actually created this procedural foliage box. You can find that in my previous playlist. But what I'm doing here is simply copying the location of my ocean floor, the height of it, and making sure that the foliage box spawns all of these banana trees from that height and above. And what I'm going to do is, I already have it in the level, I'm simply copying the scale and the location for the banana trees from my other procedural boxes, boxes that I already have here. And the other two things you would want to do is uh, turn off the allow BSP and allow the static mesh to be disabled. Now I'm going to always preview or try to preview my build in the actual play in a real time so that way you can see it. Uh, but I will be speeding up the game build process 
of it itself about two three to maybe sometimes to four times because it takes a long time to do it however one thing i did notice is that for some reason my recording program was skipping through some frames while i was recording this i haven't had any issues actually running through the landscape or of this island uh, but for some reason through this video you'll see a lot of skipping happening even though I haven't had any issues. I'm still trying to figure out why it's doing that. Maybe I've recorded too much of the stuff. It wasn't doing that before. And then what I've noticed when I went over like one terabyte of videos that I've recorded just for these series, it started to lag with me. I'll have to go back and delete some. I still have quite a lot of space left on my hard drive, but I'm not 100% sure why it's doing that. And uh, again, I have no issues with uh, frame drops in the game itself. But I will try to fix that issue, uh, hopefully in the future videos. But this was already recorded, and again, when I was recording this, it did not look like uh, it was pausing or had any issues. But I decided to keep the video that I already have and continue with what I was building, because otherwise I would not be able to redo it, since it's already been done and saved for my project. But you can see that now I have some of the banana trees spawn in the areas where I have leaves. And I'm going to keep it that way for now. Uh, we have a pretty cool looking sun over there. The ocean is not going to be touched for the moment. Again, this is going to be done sometime in the future. But uh, I'll leave that at that for now. And I'm going to move on to adding a couple more things to this shipwreck. And what I'm going to do now is add more landscape uh, of sand to the area. And the reason for that is I'm trying to cover up some of these sections here that uh, are exposed that I would like to still hide using landscape. And there's a lot of doors that uh, you would think as a player you would be able to go in there. So I'm trying to cover them up. Not only that, but also give that feel that, again, that the ship has been sitting here for quite some time. And I'm using the landscape to give that feel that the sand has been washed on top of the actual shipwreck itself and all I'm doing is pretty much raising my landscape up and smoothing it out so that way it doesn't look too bad. Now in certain areas it does look a little bit cut up but as of right now it will do just fine. Also I gotta uncover some of the other areas where I've covered some of my models that I would like to have exposed. And the interesting part is with this uh, setup is that uh, for the seashells that are procedure generated, they also appear at the top of the ship when I uh, raise the landscape up, which is really, really cool. The next thing I'm gonna do is paint some seaweed on top. I'm, I'm picturing that, you know, it's gonna have some sort of seaweed growing over time. But again, I'm trying to avoid areas where we have 3D models of the actual shipwreck itself, because the one downside about this uh, procedural foliage is that uh, I have to manually, well technically it's not a procedural foliage, this is actually um, a grass type. So with a grass type I can't uh, individually select a seaweed or any other type of grass and move it. Uh, I try to do that with foliage selection tool and it doesn't really work unless you have a procedural foliage box that's why I really like foliage box instead because you can individually select each mesh and you can move it but in this example I'm going to show you you can see that this seaweed grows right through this 3d model and it's unrealistic it would be really nice if I could actually place it on top which you can do with the foliage box you can actually set it up so that way it grows on top of the items and I'm going to actually get into that in the future uh, where we have seaweed grows on top of these models, but in this scenario, since this is a grass type, it uh, grows through it. So the only way of me solving the issue is by deleting the layer of the seaweed and just leaving the sand there. And then, now the other downside is since I'm using a circle type of brush, it creates this really um, heavy outlines. But as of right now, I'm going to just paint whatever I can and see where the seaweed will spawn i can't really control that this is all done automatically by the engine 
However, I'll go back later down the road and probably clean up a little bit of the model and the section area so that way it looks more natural. And areas where the heavy metal has been sunken in, I am trying to leave the actual sand because it would make more sense to have sand there instead of any other heavy layers or grass types. However, I do try to get as close as I can to some of these models. And I'm not too concerned about the seashells appearing on top of the seaweed because I can always regenerate that and it will disappear later down the road. Uh, again, I, right now I have three types of seaweed that actually have grass type. The fourth one is just a painting layer. I haven't actually gone to it. I've, I thought I'll save it for the future so I can show you how I add these 3D models meshes to the layer itself. And that's going to be done later down the road. I'll be using Quixel Mixer. 30 models to add all the other vegetation for the ocean. And again, I really like the way it's starting to look. It's uh, starting to look a little bit more uh, alive. And it would be really cool to see how the fish swims around certain areas. Uh, this was just a testing section where I've uh, placed some of the seaweed. But what I'm trying to do is just leave it there and add more variation. And I'm going to actually keep that section in the game. Uh, certain areas of the ocean is going to keep or have a um, vast of empty sand layer and some of the stuff is going to have seaweed, some of the stuff is going to have coral, so I'm trying to kind of combine it in between and we'll see where it's going to go because as of right now I'm just randomly placing it and trying to figure out what it would look like. The other good thing about this is that most of the seaweed is covering some of the imperfections of the actual layer if you notice since i'm using the alpha brush even though with the strength one which is the fullest strength you can have on the edges it has some somewhat more of a, like a fade to it so you can still see that some of the layers are fading really really light and you can see the sand underneath of the seaweed layer and it almost looks Sometimes unrealistic, I don't know, I feel like the seaweed would be very standing out, but in this scenario it's a little bit blurry, and in order to fix that I either have to paint over the material multiple times, or just leave it as, as is, and if I use a circular brush then it just looks very defined and stands out, it's more of a, a straight pattern, if you see those squares and straight lines rather than a smooth transition it's really difficult to do that but i figured i'll go with what i have and i will be adding better transitions with more different layers around like rocks and i'm going to be adding that in this video as well i'm going to be adding more rock formations uh, and this is going to be just a layer and i'm going to be painting it around the front of the ship Kind of giving them the look like it's uh, pushed all of the ground and all of the stone forward when it's sunk into the ground. Now, of course, certain areas where the boat sunken, you know, I'm tr trying to give it a look like the stone has been washed away with the water or it's just been sitting there and just the ground looks a little bit more disturbed. The other really interesting thing about this, uh, since I have this big uh, 3D rock model, you will notice that some of the models like this there was a, uh, a starfish the purple starfish that is halfway on the actual sand but the other part of it was uh, covered with the rock and that's due to the fact that it's been randomly generated by the engine and it doesn't cut off when there's 3d models like that you can put an invisible box there but it doesn't really work that way so here is another good example of using this uh, landscape uh, material of the rocks making it look like the anchor uh, kind of dug into the ground. So there is many uses for this and I'm going to be using most of it on the land and underwater. And you can definitely blend in some of these corroded materials together. And unfortunately you have to paint it at 100% for the seaweed to disappear. That's why you still see some of the seaweed appearing. 
but again uh, it can grow on the rocks underwater it's not a a natural occurrence but it already brings in a pretty cool effect so what i'm going to do now is copy the location of this anchor and drop it into our character for the location on x y and z value so that way i can just bring in the character into the game and i will show you in real time what it looks like underwater so let's go ahead and run around real quick to see what we have created the other downside about the grass type is that it takes a very long time sometimes to render it so you can see that it took uh, quite some time for some of the seaweed to appear which is very very annoying whereas if you have a foliage box it's automatically already there and you don't have to wait for it to appear uh, it doesn't of course happen when you're in game when the game is built and that's something that you don't really need to be worried about but when it comes to development it sometimes uh, becomes very tedious and you know and you just have to wait for it so here i'm trying to run around and see if i can find spots that, that where i can get inside of this location i know i'm running not swimming so this is something that's going to be changed in the future but as of right now i'm trying to look and run around and see if um, the obstacles that are in or any if there's any obstacles for me to walk around uh, i guess it's going to be considered as a collision for the characters between the 30 models and the character itself there's a lot of areas i can't really go through it's hard to jump uh, first of all she doesn't really jump that high <laughs> and second of all she doesn't really run as fast as i would like her to uh, especially when i do the demonstrations of the real time running around and again for whatever reason my program has been recording and dropping some frames where it was recording in segments of frames, not fully, for whatever reason. So you will see that uh, pause between uh, every time I try to run. Hopefully I uh, can avoid that in the future, but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to show you what I've been working with. Uh, therefore, I can't really recreate uh, what I've recorded, but hopefully in the future that's going to get fixed. And you can see that some of the landscaping that I just recently did it looks really uh, sharp and then not smooth so I definitely like the smooth technique using for the sand because sand usually lays pretty smooth under water in the ocean and hopefully I can even change the colors in the future here's another interesting thing you can do is optimization view modes uh, or you can do the level actual level details from compiling for mesh LOD and you can see that this 3D model is absolutely 100% gray. That means that this model has only one LOD level. Other seaweed that you see that is in red, green, and blue, and also my character, you can see that it changes in color, and that is due to the fact that they all have uh, LOD set up uh, for the distance. So the farther you go, uh, the less it will cost you for your performance. And the rocks, and the landscape of, of course and the actual the whole ship has not been properly optimized but i'll do that in a future video because it's going to take me some time so what i'm going to do next is jump back into the landscape and add a little bit more of that seaweed all along the shoreline and again i'll be jumping back and forth between the landscape and other locations that i'll be creating just because i don't really like focusing on just one area at all times uh, I, I don't know i like to get my head away from a main project and then move on to something else just because that's how sometimes i work uh, this is not the actual workflow for most game developers but this is just some, sometimes how it works out for me better and i enjoy that workflow for myself what what i'm going to do here is i'm going to actually introduce you to a new landscape material as well it's going to be a rock formation that is just a painting layer and what I'm doing is I'm actually using the landscape itself for the height variations and the slopes to kind of get an idea to what it would look like. And the way I vision it is that I have seaweed growing on some of these hills, but also those hills are more of a, like a rocky formation rather than just sand. Uh, there is, like I said, there's going to be certain areas where it's just going to be plain sand, uh, dunes, underwater, but also 
have some rock formations rather than just hills of sand. And to do that, I have added a couple layers of different materials from Quetzal or Megascans, but I'm going to be only using one. And it actually blends in really good with most of the seaweed. And again, if you see all these seashells being right on top of the actual corals, I will change that. And I'm just going to recompile it. But before I do that, I'm going to use more of this rock formations. Since this is going to be a cliffy area, I like to use this uh, rock debris to somewhat blend in other materials between the seaweed, the sand, and the rocks. And they're going to be just placed sporadically in certain areas. And here is my new rock cliff material. I'm going to set that up as a layer for my landscape and I usually keep everything in a way where I can only see the layers that I'm using for this landscape because otherwise it just uh, slows down my computer because I have so many of them and it's uh, just so much easier to know what you already have and here I have those rock formations and you can see that the seashells have disappeared once I re-simulated my seashells now this material in particular only facing in one direction uh, maybe I can create a second one just like that that's facing in the other direction and what I mean is it's going in one direction when you have the slope of this hill and you would think that it would be facing away from the top to the bottom in different directions but yet no matter which direction you paint it it's all the texture itself will only face in one direction so it kind of makes it look a little bit really strange but I'm gonna use it for now and hopefully I can add another one that's rotated I believe it's gonna be like 180 degrees in the other direction to make it look like it's coming from the other side but it blends in pretty good with the seaweed and again if you see any imperfections where, where like I've mentioned before where it's uh, slightly uh, tra transparent where you can see another material blend I will fix that later. I will add more of this, uh, of other layers of different rocks and different uh, corals and things like that to kind of blend all that stuff. And it, it definitely takes some time to cover the entire landscape with all the layers that you're looking for and create that perfect transition. I'm not going to be doing anything with the ship area, but I am trying to give you an idea what you can create by using multiple layers and from there you just kind of create anything that um, you're trying to do so of course I will be using some of the 3D models of the rocks as well to create some of the cliffs but since uh, I haven't gone to that part yet which again I believe some people do that first before they paint anything I decided to do it completely other direction or other way where I paint the landscape first and I add some of these rock formations not only that, but uh, speaking of the rocks, the ones that I have for my shipwreck, I'm going to be moving them and going to be using other corals, coral rocks instead. Those will be used on the landscape, preferably somewhere around this area where I have those reeds. And again, um, you might be uh, skipping through the video here as well, just like I did previously. But what I would like to do is just go underwater and see if we can see what this material looks like these rock formation look pretty cool now unfortunately I don't have that uh, system set up where some of that stuff is wet and some of that stuff is dry uh, but you do see uh, how sharp of a cut you see uh, you have between the layers uh, it's a straight cut uh, and more of like a square pattern very very strange but I'll try to avoid that in the future uh, again there is a lot of stuff that still needs to be tweaked and optimized like uh, the clover growing or too close to the water line uh, however I did add the these uh, rock formations and that have a uh, moth on it and you see that there is banana tree is growing inside of that rock and that is because I either have to paint the, another layer that doesn't spawn bananas underneath of the those mesh or you can actually set up a, a procedural box that actually prevents 
uh, or blocks those particular type of foliage to spawn there. So there's two different ways of doing it, but I think I'll go with the simpler way where I'm just simply painting with another layer that's going to spawn nothing. And that's probably going to be sand and then add more rocks around it. So here's another example of these rock formations that are underwater, but also she can't really jump too high. So it's hard for me to, um, go in certain places what i'm gonna do in this video i'll add or i increase the speed of the character and then also the height jump for the character as well because i'm really getting tired that i can't jump to certain areas here's another uh, mistake where you see the palm tree spawning inside of the rock uh, things like that can't be changed and again i actually had another video on how i set these rocks up and i ended up losing part of the video but for demonstration purposes, figured I'll show you that I've set them up. And let's go ahead to the area where I just painted the new part of the landscape with the seaweed. Uh, if we uh, run through this section over here where I had these uh, landscape, uh, what do you call it, the cliffs, we can actually look at it and see up close to what it actually would look like to the size of the character that it actually looked pretty big even though when you're designing it it can't really tell but the best thing about this you can run around and see where it hasn't been fully painted and again it comes with that transition between the sand and the rock formations it's difficult to create it in a way where it's 100 percent perfect but it's doable i've actually done it in a previous build of the island and the best way sometimes to do it is uh, changing your view from lit to unlit and this is where the light has been taken out of out of all the objects and then you can see all the colors for what they are in the game but here i'm actually selecting character and i'm changing the walking speed i'm going to increase it to 800 so that way she can walk a little bit faster and i'm also going to find where it says jumping right here jump z velo uh, velocity from 300 to 600 so she can jump much higher and this is going to help me jump on other objects but she hasn't previously been able to do that of course this is not something that's going to be in the game this is completely unrealistic but for demonstration purposes and testing i increased that so that way she can run a little bit faster so I can go from one side of the island to the other a little bit faster and also be able to jump on other objects that I haven't been able to jump yet now in the future of course I'm gonna set up a system where you can actually climb on particular objects like rocks trees and all the models that I've been adding to the game hopefully I'll be able to optimize and set it up in a way where it is climbable uh, by the character but as of right now, it's just going to be a simple uh, jump. Now here I'm reusing my rock blueprint. Now if you notice, if I have the rock set, uh, selected as a blueprint in the world outliner, if I were to resize it, then it will resize everything at once. So what you have to do is you actually have to go into individual, each uh, child of the blueprint, and then change the change each item separately right here for where it says inherited now of course the name still remain as a coral rock but i did change it in the world outliner to simply rocks because it's going to be now above ground but i'll change that later uh, i'm not really too concerned about the names because i know exactly what those models are and of course i can keep it if i wanted to but i figured this models would probably fit better in the area somewhere closer to the island itself and i have uh, those reeds set up and again this is most likely even temporary as well just because i am trying to play around with some of these models and create smaller biomes that will be eventually introduced down the road on a bigger landscape that i'll be creating and i figured this will do just fine for now um, didn't really look that right with the underwater uh, shipwreck so i figured i'll reuse it and as you can see i've resized them made them a little bit smaller because 
I'll be placing something else in the Brothership for Ulrich later down the road using the corals and a couple other cool looking rocks, but I don't have them in game yet, so I'll get to that later. And since I already have my banana trees and my heavy jungles, I decided to resimulate them since I've added quite a lot of uh, new materials. I want to make sure that everything is still in the same spot. So here is my uh, foliage box for reeds. Uh, sometimes you want to resimulate that if it's in the way of other items like rocks that I just placed. Uh, again, I had an extra one that I'm going to delete. And here is my procedural generation for bushes. Uh, I'm going to be using five of those different types of bushes. I have one, two, three, four, five. And again, this is something that I was working in my previous playlist on my YouTube. You can find how I was setting it up. However, I'm going to add a couple more, and as I did with the other ones, all I have to do is just copy the location of the ocean, make sure that they spawn above the height of it, and I'm going to be using the, I believe it's a grass type, or it was leaves, I think it was leaves 01, I can't really remember, I think it's leaves 05 that it's going to be spawning, because leaves 05 had a pretty cool material texture to it, it kind of almost resembles the leaves from those bu uh, bushes. And the idea is that over time, you know, the leaves fall and um, it happens only in front of those bushes, just like I did with the banana trees. And again, if there are certain areas where those bushes don't spawn, I'll have to just simply repaint it. And the interesting part of it, the procedural box, is that you can easily, much easier, there is much easier control with them rather than you do with, with the grass type. So that's one of the reasons I really like using the procedural boxes because uh, there are so many more functions available for it. But um, here is my location height for the ocean. I'm gonna change that to make sure it spawns above the ground and not under, which won't happen anyway because it's only been painted on the actual landscape above that ground. And then I'm going to resize it as well, and I'm going to resimulate that. And you saw the beginning of it. I had a couple brushes there too. And also you can reduce the shader radius and spread variations to make it a little bit more dense. But this comes to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. And as always, I want to thank everybody for watching my channel. Thank you for all the support. Welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you. And don't forget to like the video if you liked it. And... Don't forget to click the notification bell button every time I upload a video regarding Unreal Engine and my game development. Until next video, guys.